I'm out here today with son number three, VJ Seamus. He's got his own YouTube channel. And today we're going to make a knife. I want to make a Puko knife, Puko style knife. I got this one in a trade from a guy. I've already made one uh, similar knife. And actually, I want to make one pretty much like this one. I have already laid out the knife blade. Okay, one thing I want to be sure to point out is these two shoulders need to be in a perfect line. Uh, otherwise there will be a gap where the shoulder of the blade meets the front bolster. So rather than use a power tool where one little slip could cause more of a mistake than I feel like correcting, I'm going to clamp this upright and and do the final uh, refinement uh, using a hand file. Now the next step would be to work on the bevel. some of the schmutz off of here, clean up the blade a little bit before I start fitting the pieces the for the parts hand. that comprise the handle of this have a hole down the middle and they just kind of slide on like stacking pieces. Uh, and here. since this this tang is an eighth of an inch wide I don't want to make the hole any wider than an eighth of an inch. Okay, I've got uh, two pilot holes sort of started here. I'm going to clamp this in here. And I'm going to use a variety of these little rat tail files to elongate that hole and to square off the corners of it so that it will fit flush and not have any gaps visible around it when I put the, the tang all the way through it this way. I've got to be really careful that when I'm elongating the hole up and down I don't make it wider this way or I'll end up with a gap at the sides when I end up fitting this up against the front, uh, the back edge of the blade here. Square it off. Fit it in there. And it fits pretty tight all the way around. Okay, at this point I've got I've roughly cut out the uh, the piece of brass for the for the front here the bolster or the ferrule whatever you call it and I've got the slot cut and it fits tight onto the shoulder of the the blade right there I've chosen paduke and curly maple for the handle I've cut these two pieces and I have sanded the faces uh, on either side so that they're flat and parallel. And I want to get the piece of maple the right length. And to dress up this face I'll return to the sander, sand it flat and parallel with this face. Okay, there's a couple of things to go over now. Um, I'm going to use an eighth of an inch drill bit because this is an eighth of an inch thick. But it's obviously much more than an eighth of an inch wide. <coughs> so 
I'm going to have to drill two holes side by side just like we did with this and open the area in between those um, holes. I need to chisel out most of the waste between these two holes. Um, I have a, a, a special technique for finalizing the dimensions of this hole, but right now I really do have to get rid of, uh, of this waste in here. And it just takes, you know, tapping and a little bit of prying and a little bit of tapping and a little bit of They still prying. don't fit. They don't quite fit through here. Um, now, I could take these little files and work out the inside there, but that, that's uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt and it's not nearly as fun as what I came up with. I, I cut out this piece of 1 8 inch thick stock. I'm going to take my torch right there. I'm going to heat this up and then I'm going to press these pieces of wood onto this red hot piece of metal and really burn in an exact fit uh, for these pieces to fit on the tang of the knife. Alright, now we've got all the pieces that comprise the handle, and they all fit nicely onto the tang of the knife. Well, the very last thing to do, I'm going to end up putting this brass rivet at the end. I've drilled a 1 8 inch hole through the center of it, and what I want to do is round this, this very end of the tang, so that it'll fit nicely through that hole. On this stick tang knife, there's going to be a little bit of, just a little bit of a sloppy fit, and I'm going to need something like this epoxy that will be able to fill those gaps and retain its adhesive strength. That's why I'm using epoxy on this particular knife. Okay, now these pieces will set up fairly quickly. I want to make sure I've got all the pieces in place and compressed tight before it starts to set up. And it has already started to set up. So the last part of Securing the handle on here is to peen over this little piece of of the, the, the very tip of the tang is to peen it over this rivet. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm I'm mushrooming over that, that last bit of the stick tang to kind of mushroom over and hold this uh, this brass piece on which holds the whole handle together. Alright, at this point, this knife is darn near finished. Uh, beyond this, it's just a matter of aesthetics. You know, how do you want the handle to, uh, to look? Uh, how do you want it to fit in your hand? And, and that's just a matter of, of sanding, uh, shaping, and, and finishing uh, the handle. And that's about it. I'm going to make the handle of this knife similar to this earlier Puko I made. Uh, narrow taper down to, uh, down to the blade, palm swell, and then a, a, a flare at the end. Um, and in cross section pretty much follows. But basically that is, uh, this is the process I use for making a, a stick tang knife, in this case a Puko style knife. Thanks for watching.